Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charney. This is another Shropshire Church. This is the Church of St. Mary of the Virgin, Billingsley, Shropshire. It was built in the 12th century as a dependency, shall we say, of Morville Priory, which, God willing, will have been featured in a video prior to this one. Morville Priory was itself a dependency of Shrewsbury Abbey, but locally it was a big centre. And of course, before Morville Priory existed, there was Morville Minster, an Anglo-Saxon minster with a, a staff of canons who would go out and minister in the surrounding villages. So this is another one of these little Norman churches. This part of Shropshire is dotted with lovely little Norman churches. There's some big ones as well, Morville famously, of course. Another one is Kinlet, uh, which, God willing, will be in a future video. So we'll have a look around here at Billingsley. It's obviously had a Victorian restoration. It's still got a nice double-decker 17th century pulpit and uh, other features that are certainly well worth turning off the, the road to see if you're ever in the area. So let's have a look around. So as usual, we start on uh, start at the west end there. Was an old vestry here? That's where that mirror comes from, by the way. This is the font, which is a great big Norman thing. And behind me, so let's turn and have a look, we have the battlefield cross of Lieutenant H.W. Gibbs of, the, uh, of Shropshire, of the Royal Horse Artillery. That's what R H A means. The horse artillery say, effectively are, are supposed to be your rapidly deployed battlefield artillery. There's a, there's a Picture of him lower down, died of wounds, 23rd, oh, 25th of the 3rd, 1918. And these battlefield crosses would have originally been set up at the gra on the grave of the man they commemorated. And then when the, the, the present stone memorials were set up, battlefield crosses could be, for a, for a sum of money, they could be shipped back to England, and that's what's happened here, and very often they were displayed in churches. In some cases, there's a great number of them, which can be it's a very sobering thing to see, of course. Restoration of Victorian floor there. Um, we have here the north wall, these windows, and yes, here's Lieutenant Harold Walter Gibbs there, um, Winnipeg Arras in France, um, so he is basically a woman, or it's a tiny parish, double-decker pulpit, um, from the look of it, it always was a double-decker, so you've got your reading desk at the bottom and your preaching at the top, and the clerk would have to find someone else to um, do his reading from, nice, relatively plain Norman chancel arch, and then in the chancel we have what is the great memorial, the, the, the great treasure of the church, and it is the Easter Sepulchre. The Easter Sepulchre. I've been planning, in fact, my, one of my meetings of coming here and doing this particular church is to talk about Easter Sepulchres. So here is the Easter Sepulchre. Now, how, what were they and how did they work? Well, I'll tell you in a moment. Well, here we are. This is the Easter Sepulchre. Medieval church services were, or became increasingly elaborate, and particularly when it came to services for special occasions like Easter and what was and Christmas, and both of those were popular names. The official language of medieval Catholic church was Latin, and so technically it, it was not. Christmas, but the Feast of the Nativity, and not Easter, but Pasch, the, the Resurrection. Easter is a Germanic word, but Easter was the popular term, and still is in the English-speaking world. And here we have an Easter sepulchre. Now, what would happen? Remember that in the Middle Ages, you are basically, people believe in transubstantiation, that when the the wafer is consecrated at the Mass, it becomes in some way the body, blood, and divinity of Christ. 
Now, at Easter time, you are celebrating the resurrection, but before then, there is the crucifixion and the burial. And so on Good Friday, this Easter sepulchre would be the scene of a ceremony where the consecrated wafer would be, quote-unquote, buried. And it would remain here with lights, candles burning until Easter Sunday, when that would be the resurrection. So it's part of this pageantry, if you will, of medieval liturgy and the liturgy that marked the passing season. This is one of the best Easter sepulchres in Shropshire. In other parts of England, and particularly in Nottinghamshire and in Lincolnshire, you can find Easter sepulchres that are carved with the resurrection, the guards, the women of two, angel, this sort of thing. This is, in that sense, a bit plainer, but it's still, it's a very grand structure. At the Reformation, they were generally regarded, this is a superstitious thing, and they were often smashed up. That's when they were so. Many places they'd be wooden, and of course a wooden Easter sepulchre, the Reformation comes, just kick it out, and here's some firewood, or you can use it to make something else. But stone ones, well, you've got a hole in the wall here, what do you do? Do you smash it up, or do you retain it and just go, well, this is just a thing here. Um, it's a shelf. And that's what they did here. It's, this is just a shelf. You could put something over it, perhaps, but it survived, and it is a, a remarkable piece of work. It is 14th century by the look of it, and I'm quite surprised to find something this grand in this tiny little Norman church. Well, back then to the normal tour of the interior. So there we are. That's a bit of an explanation as to what an Easter sepulchre is and how it worked. Um, today, of course, it's used a display of uh, Bible and a completely um, worthless, cheap alms dish. Um, because you wouldn't display anything. It was worth anything, because unfortunately people steal stuff. The piscina... It's quite plain. Again, we have a, a table here, the cover of which is such that I'm not going to... A, I think, in fact, that what you've got here is a stone altar that is covered by the, up against the wall here. Easter sepulchre again, and we've got the communion rails. Quite well forward, partially, I think, to put the, the uh, Easter sepulchre here, but also, actually, no, it looks like what they've done is they've moved them at some point recently, more recently because those are squares that I expect to have all these areas either side of the central um, pavement, I would expect to have choir stalls on, but they don't. Um, no choir, so no choir stalls. Um, Billingsley is uh, not, a, not a big place. It used to be larger. It used to have uh, a colliery, and of course it's a mine, so it's a mining village, but the mines have all gone. Here we are, the pulpit again, and the, the lower deck there. But like I say, the mines have all gone, and therefore the population has plummeted because with a mine, mining village, certainly one like this, without the mines, there's no reason really for people to move here. So there we are, back to the font, and it's the most impressive little church, and that Easter sepulchre is quite a, quite a surprise when you get there into the chancel. Now we are outdoors at Billingsley. Once again, I say it's a simple two-cell building it's on the inside. And as we go around the outside, we'll see some more of its interesting features. This is not a building that is impressive in its scale so much as in its details, like that Easter sepulchre. And there's more to come on the outside. So the first thing we see is that door, and you can see that there is a, a blocked Norman doorway in the wall, in the middle of the south wall. And I looked at it and thought, is this a reset door? It appears to have an opening on the inside as well. So no, obviously these corbels have been reset, but there's a patterned tympanum, and you have these uh, um, capitals there, but that's been filled in and a new doorway has been built slightly later, and not much later at all. I mean, this is, uh, that would be earlier 12th century, this would be later 12th century. A simpler roll moulding as, but still, it's, it is Norman as well. 
the porch is 19th century. We'll uh, lovely big yew trees. You often find these big yew trees in churchyards. And traditional location for them. And some of them are quite interesting in size and shape, as you can see here. Um, to think about the going around the back end of the church. I don't think it's a good idea. It looks a little bit treacherous, and I don't want to risk anything. Because if I fall over, that's it. Um, if I slip and fall, I and, um, haven't got two arms to brace myself with anymore, because uh, one of them doesn't work for bracing. But there we are. This is you know, a simple stone building, little chancel. Norman. The bell cot, of course, is Victorian. The bells were rehung in 2012 to mark the uh, a jubilee of the Queen, the late Queen. Um, and amazing that basically should last another decade after that. So we have here a very typical Victorian memorial. They're always a bit sentimental, these things, but. Um, they are, they make some sense. I mean, this is again, this is to a, um, a young daughter, so it makes sense as a memorial in that, in that situation. And that little bell cot again, and the porch, and I'm sorry, the chancel. And it's a little boiler room off to one side, and then behind that, where the vestry used to be, is now the um, toilet, which is, of course, a, a requirement in modern churches, medieval churches. You'd not so important. So that is uh, St Mary's Billingsley. Um, deceptively simple, but with that wonderful Easter sepulchre on the inside. Like I say, it is probably the best surviving medieval Easter sepulchre in the whole of Shropshire. Um, the church isn't that hard to find, but you have kind of got to be in the right area to be able to, to get here. So that is Billingsley. And so there you have it, St Mary's Billingsley. A surprising little church that feels in the middle of nowhere, but once, of course, this was a, a bustling mining village, but the mines have gone, the coal mines have gone, and that's that. Well, thank you for watching, and may God bless you and keep you until next time.